Hi guys and welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and today I thought we would talk about this. This bag, this vest, this trail running vest that I've been uh, using lately on my bikepacking trips and just general cycling trips. So first of all, this bag is the Everdict 10 litre trail running vest. Now I brought this in the, with the intention to do some trail running, especially with a goal I have from running from Oxford to Bournemouth. Um, but it's also become kind of a fixture on my bikepacking trips because I've been wearing it. So first of all, let's take a look at the bag. So this bag is technically made for trail running, like I said, and I have used it to run a marathon before, and it does perform great in that respect. But we are going to be looking at this bag today from a bike packing or bag used on the bike perspective. So let's start with the specs of this bag. The bag has a total of nine pockets, 10 if you count the bladder pocket and has a capacity of 10 liters. It weighs 285 grams without the water bladder. It comes complete with a one liter water bladder. It comes in three different sizes, extra small to small, medium to large, and extra large. The bag we have here is a medium to large. It comes in three different colors, black, blue, and red. The one we have here today is the red. The bag costs £34.99p from Decathlon. So the front six pockets are these stretchy mesh style pockets. The one on the top section of the shoulder straps are great for quick access to snacks. The back strap pocket is about the right size to get a modern smartphone inside. The front one is slightly smaller, probably just a little too small to fit this iPhone 10 in and to feel comfortable that it won't fall out. In total, you have four of these shoulder strap pockets, two on each side, and also nice little feature attached to one of these pockets is a little whistle, just in case you need to alert someone of your whereabouts, an emergency, or maybe scare some cows. The other two strap pockets are lower down on the straps and are again two mesh type pockets that are at an angle with the cutout kind of going through the middle. I have found these a bit small for anything apart from the odd bit of rubbish really. Moving on to the rear of the bag, there are three pockets. The first one is the lower pocket. This again, made out of the mesh style material and is elasticated. This is great for storing a rain jacket or bits and bobs that you want to have easy access to on the fly. However, for me, I actually struggle a bit with getting things in and out of this pocket with the bag still strapped to my back as the bag sits high up. This is probably made worse for me as I'm tall, but with the pocket being elasticated, getting a rain jacket in there is no problem at all. The main compartment on this bag is accessed with a vertical zip. The material of this section of the bag is a little elasticated. Now I have managed to fit a bivy and a down sleeping bag in with a few extra bits when running with this. Although I don't do that when using this bag on the bike, the bag isn't waterproof, but probably okay for light showers. Inside the main pocket, there is also a smaller zipped pocket. This pocket is for keeping them small essentials like bank cards and cash, and then pesky things that always go missing. The bag also comes included with a one liter water bladder. The bladder uses a slider on the top of the bladder to open and close, making it easy to clean after use. And also has a locking mechanism on the bike valve for when you are not using it. The bladder slides between the mesh back of the bag and the inner main compartment, making it easy to refill without having to unzip anything. The bag also has two elasticated straps, two on each of the shoulder straps. These are meant for running poles, so I haven't had any reason to use these. The bag is secured with three chest straps that can be tightened easily while wearing the bag and also these can be repositioned up or down easily with three little slots 
to get your correct fitting. So like I said, I initially brought this bag for a planned 100 mile run I'd like to do in the near future. Now usually I will ride with a chrome sling bag as I need to carry a few bits of camera gear, the drone, etc. But as I was heading out on the bike to do a 24 hour ride around the New Forest on a relatively hot day and knowing that there wasn't a whole lot of places to filter water and wanting to stop as little as possible to have the best possible chance to rack up as many miles as possible, I decided that I might as well give the Everdick Trail Run Invest a go on the bike. As it is the only bag I currently own that is compatible with a water bladder. And after that ride, I've got to say that it was probably one of, if not the most comfortable bags I have ever ridden in. Now, I typically would avoid riding with a bag as much as possible because of the sweaty back, which I want to say, although you still get a bit of a sweaty back with this bag, it is by far a very breathable bag as far as bags go and it does not feel really hot riding in this bag. So the main reason I'm using this bag right now for most of my bikepacking rides is for the bladder. The fact that it is dry in England right now and on the hot side and the rides I've been doing, there just hasn't been a whole lot of places to grab water from a stream. And I also just try and avoid buying water as much as I possibly can. And since using this bag with the bladder, I've actually found myself actually drinking a lot more because of how easy it is to grab the hose and have a drink. Whereas when I have only bottles on my bike, especially when on off-road adventures, I find myself just not drinking enough. But there is always a downside of the bladder and that is the water does end up becoming warm, like body temperature warm, as it is warming up with your body as you ride. But if you are only drinking small amounts each time, little sips, which is pretty much how I've been using it, you only take the water that is in the hose and that stays cool as it is away from your body in front of you. Like I said, this bag is a really comfortable bag to ride with. It just doesn't move and with it being so light, just makes this great for riding in. Once it's on you, you soon forget it's there. It doesn't move side to side, it doesn't bob up and down over the rough stuff, it just stays put. The bag is also nice and streamlined to your back. I'm really liking having the easy access shoulder pocket that I can grab a quick snack or grab my phone or whatever really. If you are doing longer rides, then the more pockets the better in my opinion. I will say though, when you first put this bag on, it does feel a bit strange in that it feels a bit small and tight, whereas with a normal bag, you just tend to adjust the straps to your body. This bag doesn't really have that. You need to pick the correct size based on your waist size. So the bag does feel quite snug to your body, which is what helps stopping it move. But once it's on and you position it correctly, it just sits in place nicely and you just get used to it pretty fast. So as much as I do really like riding in this bag, you know, as much as you can enjoy riding with a bag, there are a few things that mean I can't ride with this bag all year round. The main one for me being that the bag itself just isn't waterproof. Now, obviously this only matters if what you put in the bag needs to stay dry, but I do need to keep the camera stuff as dry as possible. And although this bag will be okay in light showers, anything more than that, will mean whatever is inside will get wet. But I will say on that note that because this bag is so streamlined to your body, I have just chucked my rain jacket over the top of the bag with no problems when I did get caught out in the rain. The other thing I dislike about this bag is that I do find it a bit hard to actually reach inside the bottom mesh pocket, the one that is meant to be easy to reach. Now I think this is more because of how tall I am and I think most normal sized humans will be fine. And the final thing that I dislike about this bag is that to get inside of the bag it is a little slower than the average bag. Unclipping the bladder hose, then the three chest straps to then have to completely remove the bag to get inside. 
Whereas with my sling bag, for example, it's one clip, flip the bag around my body to get inside, meaning I don't even have to take it off to get inside. Probably not a big issue depending on what you are keeping inside though. So guys, there we have it. There is a quick look, first impressions kind of video of the Everdict 10 litre trail running vest. It's definitely something I'm gonna to continue to use. It's definitely uh, just helped me quite a lot, especially in the hotter kind of climates. Definitely don't think it will be like a winter thing, but definitely is gonna be used for the um, summer months. So guys, hope this video was a little bit helpful for you to sort of have a look at this bag. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. We do lots of bikepacking adventures and uh, coming soon probably some kayaking adventures. So till next time guys, keep smiling, enjoy the adventure, peace.